Now, the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson, has this morning weighed into the debate about how best to solve the Eurozone crisis. He says he's against the Prime Minister's big bazooka solution, uh, decisive intervention from the European Central Bank, and against closer political ties between members of the single currency. Well, the disagreement highlights the acute political sensitivity of dealing with this problem. So what is the best way to battle for Britain's interests in a Europe plagued by economic ills? <laughs> On Monday, David Cameron was telling the city that the Euro crisis represented an opportunity to get stuck in and champion reform of the EU, and that Britain's membership allowed it to fight for free trade. And the PM's been travelling quite a lot this week, to Brussels and then Berlin, jousting with Herman van Rompuy and Angela Merkel. So who's the better Eurosceptic? The pugnacious David Cameron, who wants to lead his crusade across the Channel, or those in UKIP and some Conservatives who want to withdraw from the EU and pull down the portcullis, arguing that this is the best way to avoid the Teutonic domination that Nigel Farage fears. The Eurosceptic Chancellor George Osborne has even argued for more political integration, but only for the Eurozone to avoid financial ruin in the future, while at the same time resisting Franco-German demands for levy on financial transactions, which the British say would hurt their moneylenders in the City of London. So, where is the patriotic cause? Fight or flight? Sally forth or pull up the drawbridge? And we're joined now by the UKIP leader, Nigel Farage, who uh, we know where you stand. You'd like to draw up the drawbridge. No. no. Uh, well, you want no, us to no, stay no, in the European no, Union? No, you are implying that by leaving political union that we're somehow isolating ourselves from Europe and the rest of the world. That is not what we're saying. What we're saying is let's divorce ourselves amicably from political union and replace that with a genuine free trade agreement, not just with Europe, but open ourselves up to the rest of the world as well. But isn't the real Eurosceptic thing to do, which is what David Cameron and George Osborne are doing, which is to say, we are fighting for Britain's interests within Europe and trying to get the best deal possible, and that is where we will get that best deal. Well, what they've been doing over the last two months is urging the Eurozone to go faster and deeper into a political union. I've warned that if they do that, it will lead to the destruction of democracy across Europe. And in the last 10 days, we've seen two democratically elected governments felled by the Eurocrats and their lackeys put in place. The Cameron policy is urging more and more and more Europe. You've often cited Norway as the example that Britain should follow. Jens Stoltenberg, the Prime Minister there, has described his democracy as a fax democracy, <laughs> where they wait for a fax from Brussels to tell them what rules they have to apply that they have no say over. Well, Norway is one potential model. Just remember that Norway is not in the EU. She pays a tiny amount of money to be a member of the EEA, the European Economic Area. She has her own fisheries, controls her own farming. She's outside of justice and home affairs. What she does do is implement European rules and on that portion of their is, trade is, is that is with Europe. Is obliged to keep all, uh, accept all EU legislation on, on the single market and yet has no say in what that legislation is. If we sell goods to America, we have to conform with their standards. The being like Norway would be a very good holding position for Europe. It would guarantee us free trade and give us a chance to negotiate the kind of deal that Switzerland has where they don't have to uh, oh, have any of the rules. OK, let us just talk then to about uh, the transaction tax that would affect mm. the city. That would have very serious consequences if Britain were outside the European Union, because any transactions not denominated in euros would still face that tax. Look, we've heard all this ten years ago. We were told well, uh, is that wrong we, or right? No, we were told ten years ago if we didn't join the euro, London, the city would collapse. Actually, the amount of business we do there has grown bigger as a proportion of the rest of Europe, but, but, not smaller. But we are inside the, the European Union. If we have the financial transaction tax imposed <coughs> on the city of London, we will lose our biggest single industry. It's as simple as that. But if Britain were outside the European Union mm -hmm. and Europe goes ahead with the transaction tax, then that is going to, that is going to hit the City of London very no, hard. No, the City of London would then become like an offshore island and you could see everybody from Frankfurt and Paris coming to London. That is how business works. It, business goes to where it's efficient to do business. The financial transaction tax but you would talk, be a disaster. You talk to people in the city and they say the complete opposite to you with respect, Mr Farage. They say that what's well, going I spent to 20 years working there. I know quite a few of them myself. Yeah, I know. And they would say that what would happen is if, you, if the transaction tax, if Britain doesn't fight its corner, 
by being part of the EU. It gets imposed with maybe Britain outside the European Union. Anything that's denominated in euros would still be subject to that tax. The, the, the banks would go elsewhere. They would not you stay are in suggesting, London. You are suggesting that the eurozone will turn in on itself. Whatever they try to do, they will not be able to stop products denominated in euros or dollars or sterling being traded in the city of London. We are a flexible, adaptable financial community. We're good at it and we don't want Brussels closing it down. Uh, you said uh, you don't want to live in a German-dominated Europe, which is yeah. what we've got now. Well, it certainly is. Uh, and that's because there is a total vacuum of leadership in Brussels. Um, whilst they've got a lot of power, they've got no authority because no one's elected. Merkel has stepped into the breach. She is now in charge. That is bad for Europe. Don't forget, the European Union was supposed just, to just hold Germany's power in. Just very briefly, and do you think that Germany would have less power were Britain to withdraw from the EU? Uh, no, I think that Germany is in a totally dominant position within the Eurozone, and the only way to get democracy back is for countries like Greece and Italy to leave the Euro. Sarah? Is there a bit of a danger that you're, you're sort of inflaming prejudice by um, talking about Germany rather than Europe? Is there a sort of... There's, um, uh, no. there's a sort of emo <laughs> no. something emotional no, I mean, look, what has yeah. happened in Greece and Italy yeah. is democracy has been yeah. stripped out of those countries. That is something that ought to be worrying us very greatly indeed. The fact the Germans are in charge, no one country should be in that dominant position in Europe. That can't be good for anybody. It's, uh, it, well, uh, what you have, I think, is a tension between an essentially emotional argument because to care about the nationality of whoever is providing economic leadership is emotional rather than intellectual. The intellectual argument is who is best suited to deliver economic benefits to this part of Europe and I, I, you have a pretty tough job convincing me that any of the current crop of politicians in Westminster were better suited to economic management than well, Angela Merkel and her team. Uh, just to pick unemployment, I think two jobs created since May of this year in Germany for every one lost here. I, 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 it might be a generational thing, and I don't mean that to sound insulting, but I, I don't particularly care about the nationality or the origin, the geographical origin of sound economic leadership. Okay, well, I don't think it is sound economic leadership. It's better than ours. No, the best thing is those, well, those, just those, Mediterranean, countries, than ours, domestic those Mediterranean countries need to leave the Eurozone. Well, it doesn't matter how German. much money. I'm talking Germany, about Germany. Germany throws at it. It doesn't matter how much money they throw at it. Those but countries are in the wrong currency, and the whole thing's failing. It's going to break up. But would you accept that is an emotional argument that James has just said, that you don't want to live in a German-dominated Europe? It sounds... There's just a little bit of kind well, of racism a, there. Oh, oh, come on, I'm married to a German, for goodness sake. I mean, it's very unlikely that I'm going to take a strong anti-German line per se. I think it well, is... Well, it is a, a strong anti-German line per se. We have had two <laughs> German ministers in the last week being abusive about Britain, abusive about our status, telling us the pound's dead, we must join the euro, we must have the financial transaction tax. The time has come to say to German politicians and EU politicians, thank you, we've had enough, we're getting out this of here, we'll have a simple free trade deal, and that's sufficient. It's not abuse, it's, 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 it's Teutonic okay. pragmatism. They're simply what, saying... Say it, the pound's dead. That, but that's we, what we they give it up and join. That's well, what well, they believe. It's not an insult. Well, that's, I'm sorry, again, I take it as an insult. That's an emotional response. I take it as an insult. Absolutely. All right, all right, all right. Then we're going to draw stumps on that particular uh, issue. Thank you very much indeed, Nigel Farage, for being with us.